Okay, this is going to be my Labyrinth of Refrain tutorial. Uh, based on my last nearly completed run, this sh run should make it to the final boss. Um, we're just going to go through, kind of tell interesting things, what I'm doing, what I'm out to accomplish, why I'm doing things, stuff like that. Basic tutorial things. Um, right up front, I play the game in English because this opening cutscene is 35, uh, 32 seconds in English and I think 38 seconds in Japanese, so you save a little bit of time. Uh, with the voices set to English, um, all of this is RNG manipulated, so you saw me just bonk the wall, which has manipulated my RNG seed to make it through this room. I bonk two more times to do the same to the next room. Um, so everything up to this point is completely scripted, as long as you refresh your game. Uh, every time you restart, um, you don't have to, it's not like huge variance, but now that it's a known thing, it is uh, a way to get a consistent time through the tutorial. I'm not sure how long you can hold the um, RNG manipulation. I haven't been able to hold it so far uh, through um, the evil enigmatic space. I'm not sure why. Um, but I'm not sure if your RNG seed can change when you do menuing. Um, evil enigmatic space is basically all story, just running through. Um, so he's skipping on to our first puppet. Our first puppet's an Aster. Uh, I used to make a tank here, but uh, I swapped to an Aster for more lance damage at the very beginning of the game and more consistency on the final fight of the game. Um, this is going to be the puppet we put all of our um, resources into. It is a moon puppet. And it will sit in our frail pact throughout most of the game until the final boss. Um, this is going to be our basic puppet. Um, our basic copy paste mage puppet. Um, putting our pacts in. Um, Putting our offensive puppet in the offensive pact. Um, we put our frog guy in just to get EXP until he can get a real pact that actually does damage. And we put our um, Aster in the fighting pact for more melee damage. Um, getting encounters because I couldn't get any kind of manipulation through. Or I haven't figured out manipulation through this point. Um, our first trip through, we're basically just getting rid of tutorials, we're getting three story items, we're unlocking um, dungeon buttons, we're getting puppet parts, I believe we get two or three sets of puppet parts. Um, but I'm also going to be skipping a puppet part that I could grab in favor of grabbing it later. Um, I've actually watched enough of this run to know that it makes... Uh, a mistake. Um, so the spot where it's supposed to do the optimized pick up, uh, part pickup timing, it actually does not. Um, and I'll point that out when we get there. Um, grabbing a soul, that's our quest item or our story item. What? This first trip in is probably one of the more dangerous, just because um, while the game is still on normal, the enemy's crit chance is a lot higher than when you play on easy. Um, we grab the attack pack here and we throw it on immediately. That's in case we get a bunch of Thistlehead fights. This floor has a five Thistlehead fight. And if you don't have the attack packed on with your first um, AoE Donum, you could actually lose tons of time. And since they're on normal, 
the enemies are on normal difficulty. You can actually uh, end up getting taken out and lose a bunch of EXP on your exit. Or even just get completely mopped up if you get really unlucky, since uh, most of them outspeed you. Yeah, the this lot is faster than level 2 poppets, especially since these are mages and asters, notoriously slow poppets. Um, go in, catch our story up, make another mage puppet. This is mostly just to have EXP on uh, a puppet. We don't really have a good pack to put it in, and I don't even think we put it in a pack up front. We wait until we have another mage pack. It's not horribly important um, to, like, get it up front and getting the best EXP possible, because, like, our ideal is skipping as many encounters right here as we can. Um, we're not looking for any, like, particular... Uh, XP threshold, just whatever we can get our hands on to get more stats. Um, so right there, I intentionally skipped getting some uh, puppet parts that were in a wall, or that were in a room, just to the south of me, uh, in favor of coming back later. So that is intentional. Um, that isn't the mistake yet. Uh, I turned on the difficulty and put find bore items. That allows me to see the um, glowing spots on the floor, I believe. Uh, or I think more of the glowing spots. I'm not sure. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> entirely why I grabbed that one um, or what it does. Um, Oh, uh, I should actually double check that. Um, we're finding more story items coming through here. Last time we were in here, we were mostly grabbing puppet parts, packs. Um, we touched the stairs to push the story. Um, I made a mistake, the which got me into that encounter. Not the best. Um. We're putting on this amulet immediately when we pick it up. Amulets are amazing for um, mage puppets. They give, they are some of the best source of donum uh, power and also uh, the best source of uh, mana. Or the best source of donum points. Yeah. Um, going into the wall, I think, yeah, we get a lot of good things. Weathered weeds and saltpeter, that's what we're looking for. Um, saltpeter, we need to advance the main story, and withered weeds we need for later to trade for potatoes. Um, uh, this run is basically the same thing we've been doing. Grabbing more puppet parts. I believe there's three or two souls in a puppet part on this floor. Um, and there's, I believe, we have to talk to the boatman uh, who speaks gibberish, and we have to pick up a document still. Um, that should let us push the main story three times. Doing all of those events. Uh, um, and it was actually just back here. Yeah. So instead of going down the stairs, I was supposed to go right into the intersection and pick up a puppet part, which you'll see later. But I like I was supposed to do it right there, not doing it right there um, means that I have to go into another crafting session instead of knocking out my last two puppets at the same time. Um, so it's just a small mistake, but it is a mistake, and it should have been done there. Um, 
collect the boatman, that's story progression. We're gonna go over here, collect the document. I'm gonna assault Peter from combat, that's pretty good. If you're going to get an encounter, you might as well get good things from it. I'm gonna explode myself right there, because even if I had a witch's bell, I don't think I would use it. Um, I almost always try to save those until I'm done with um, Amadeus Necropolis. Um, this time I'm coming in to farm for, um, floor items. Getting weather weeds and saltpeter is my primary objective here. Just going to rinse and repeat this route until I have everything I'm looking for. I'm realistically only trying to get the salt peter and the weathered weeds are bonus because I can come back in for the weathered weeds whenever and there's multiple places throughout the game where uh, withered weeds drop so I don't need all of the withered weeds here they'll also drop in um, verdant phenom so it's only after verdant phenom is done that I will hard commit to finishing uh, withered weeds Uh, I believe I should have the ability to play with my teleports. I'm going to drop one there. Through the wall. I believe it's going to be this time that I... Uh, yeah, this is the time where I go and grab the puppet parts through the wall. Um, it's just a lower chance at getting encounters than the old way of doing it, where you would... Uh, Use the doors, walk through rooms. Uh, so, grabbing it through the back, if you don't make the mistake, should technically save you time most times. Um, we're going to go talk to the boatman, get the iron Maddock. gonna do our crafting we're going to make an aster as our sixth puppet just so uh it's getting exp and has more stats going into astrum um, because we don't want uh we don't want it to be killed in the pecorino fight later when we're going through astrum um so getting it now will give it the statue or give it the mad statues exp I'm throwing on my mage pact here, throwing um, a puppet in the pact, just getting EXP. Uh, now we're going to go talk to Domina, get the... I forget what the item's called. It's like Ferryman's Lamp or something. We're getting the item that the Ferryman wants to have in order to make sure it's safe to cross. Uh, we yoink the spear because this is a really good spear and it stops us from having to um fight the fairy king so we're closing on the end of campanula i do kind of a weird little thing here drop a mud exit 
and teleport right to that mud exit. It actually saves about one second <laughs> to <laughs> do that. Uh, it looks really silly though. Uh, we grab that treasure barrel because we're going to sell it uh, and buy puppet parts since we get three souls later, but we aren't given the puppet parts to uh, go along with them. And there are no puppet parts in all of Astrum. So there are no freebies sitting around. Uh, we do a quick little equip, throw on the fairy amulet, the mud amulet Domina gave us. Um, basically just equip all good amulets and that rusted spear I picked up. I need that rusted spear because these gnomes are really hard to hit. You saw like two misses uh, from my mages. Um, the rusted spear has enough hit that it will always hit gnomes, even at their ridiculously high speed. Even on normal, um, their speed is too low to survive the, the um, rusted lance. Uh, even when you're coming in at such a low level. Um, I believe this run gets a lot of encounters through here. Basically, I'm just clearing up story stuff and trying to push my apprentice notes. You need a lot of apprentice note items from this area. Um, the first area in the game isn't that heavy on your apprentice notes, but I do believe there's like five apprentice notes that you need to clear up here. Uh, or five that you can clean up here. Four of them you absolutely have to do just to get more apprentice node unlocks. Um, any, like if you go three or less coming through here, there's a really good chance that your apprentice notes just soft lock and you can't complete the game. I've had many runs die to that. Um, so I believe I equipped that flame amulet immediately just because amulets are so good. They just need amulets. Continuing through, I grabbed one of the apprentice notes items I needed through there. It was the olive branch. Um, getting a lot of encounters through here. It was probably really sad to have this many encounters when I was playing this run. Uh, kind of grab a mage pact right here. Oh, there was some frame rate issues on my recording. Um, throw it on, and then we face the statue. The statue is weak to mud and blunt, so uh, we just queue up a bunch of mud and blunt attacks. We don't really give any specific commands to our Aster. Um, just hit it with a stick. He has such a ridiculous weapon that he even does good damage. Um, you just kind of hope he doesn't catch too many magic attacks because he's not very magic resistant. Um, collect the EXP there, collect a little wall mana. I don't go out of my way to collect a bunch of wall mana early. Um, there isn't much of a point, considering you can get through uh, the first two stages before you have the ability to disenchant items with only two portals. Uh, you'll blow yourself up a couple of times, uh, but you can make it through. Um, so right now we're just heading to the farm spot. We've done all of our, uh, like all of the quest objectives that we can up to this point. Um, so we're really just parking ourselves in our next farm spot. I grab a toy jewelry right there off one of the floor glowy spots. Um... I check what items I had for my apprentice notes just to make sure I know. Um, catch our story up. I'm going to sell the treasure barrel. And we're going to buy, I think, like nine, eight or nine. Oh, we bought 11. 
Um, and some mugwort bombs. That's just so that I don't have to heal. Uh, I don't believe I usually use them. I just buy them there for save day. Um, but it's better to rely on like out of battle healing. I'm uh, making, I think, all mages here until I'm mage capped. It goes, uh, like I start with Aster's being my first puppet, my sixth puppet, I believe. Uh, and then I'll pick up my mages until I'm at eight mages. I finish my Aster's and then I believe I make tanks, my three tanks. And that will be my core squad for getting uh, through the game, through the final boss. And I'll make some junk puppets after that, just to take advantage of the um, mage's passive bonus to donum abilities. Uh, so I went back in and I'm farming now for um, the Apprentice Nota items. I need to complete uh, five, or I need to complete four of the five here. I don't remember completely what items I'm looking for. I know Agent Black is one of them. All of Branch I already had. I think I'm looking for Toy Sword, Conquer Leaf. I believe there's one more item, but it's escaping me. There's Conquer Leaf. Um, so probably still looking for s Toy Sword. Oh, it's a bread sandwich. That's what it is. Yep, there's my Toy Sword. Uh, so I didn't get bread sandwich. So um, Toy uh, Sword and Jewelry, Jewelry Act is one item, and they only complete one note when I'm talking about these. Um, although bread sandwich, I do believe you can pick up both from battling gnomes and from uh, somewhere else in the game. I don't remember where. I think it could be somewhere in Dusk and Tannis. Like if you get really desperate. Um, but like nine times out of 10, you'll probably complete that one accidentally without realizing that you had picked up a bread sandwich from combat. Um, so with my apprentice notes being in an acceptable spot, I'm just continuing on. Um, there's a bunch of forced combat here because everything's stuffed in a closet that you need to get through. Um, I'm going to drop a mud portal right before fighting this mini boss. Um, that will let us use the door behind it. Um... Since that is the superior door um, for getting to Peko. So I dropped that right there. This fight is really easy. Although you can get trolled if... Um, I don't think it has a guard rate. But I think it can um, evade rate you. After you get it to this flashing state. Uh, and if it gets away you have to <laughs> restart the fight. I only had, ever had that happen like once though. Um, most of the times when you have a bad split here, it's because you had a bad item farm like I did. I lost like a minute to my item farm. So I needed to come back so many times. I grabbed that livestock collar from uh, the chest because I'm going to disenchant it later. Um, amulets do really well for disenchanting. I grabbed, uh, received lots of EXP, so EXP stacking. Um, you don't need it this early. Most of the time, uh, I will get it at Melm, but I just had a surplus of uh, extra EXP, and it's never bad to have uh, EXP stockpiling. Uh, I start stockpiling. You just have to like make sure you take a mental note of when you get EXP stockpiling. Um, 
because if you start stockpiling and don't unstockpile, you get really sad, especially in a speed run where like you don't have time to farm. Um, more statues. Uh, so I used to go through the prison instead of t uh, using the mud exit and taking the door back. Uh, back behind the no man bush. Um, I changed it just because um, this has fewer chances at combat. Uh, so it's a higher chance that you don't have to return back to base before Pecorino. Although you do kind of end up um, missing an item uh, that you do have to go back for. But I think overall, it um, it saves time to do it this way. Um, I remember testing it, and I think this route was more consistent just because of the amount of combat. Um, I think both ways are viable though. I think at their best they they have about the same time, but at their worst um, this one's uh, faster. Um, Picarito fight really isn't that dangerous. It's mostly just about getting the gnomes in front of her away, because having them both hit you can really get you chunked, but you don't want to focus down if you don't really focus down the front one, you mostly just cast mud repeatedly, get the most damage efficiency you can to end the fight as quickly as you can. Um, but like, I even had a pretty clean run getting to Pecorino, and like, as you can see, I was pretty low on mana across the board, except for these two stabby packs on the end. It's really hard to run out of mana on those. Um, I made sure to unstack, get the bonus EXP. Um, always making sure to repair parts so that our puppets aren't wandering around damaged because the more fragile your puppets are, uh, the more likely it is that you just randomly lose the XP to bad crits. Um, grab that shot glass for uh, breaking down later. I'm gonna go grab a story item right here in Gnome's Blood. Um, and that's Astrum complete. We should have, we'll make one small revisit. That's why I left the mud portal there. Um, but outside of that, we're done with Astrum. I look around for collection spots. Um, so, right now, we need to touch three story points in order to progress the, uh, or get the ability to smash rocks. Um, Smash those big boulders in the hallway. Um, that's basically everything that we're trying to do on our first trip. Um, I go around grabbing these glowing spots because they will be... Uh, well, they're, they're necessary for apprentice notes, and we're still looking for apprentice note items in this area. Um, basically just getting what we can while we're moving. Um, sadly, like, most of the thing, or at least the, uh, the rock golems through this area are magic resistant. Um, so there's one thing, and we talk to the fourth story point, and we're done. Um, so one thing this run doesn't do, um, that... Uh, the rules were changed to accommodate is uh, so after I would get done with 
messing with my apprentice notes. I'm going to descent a bunch of stuff. Uh, do apprentice notes. I'm going to do um, which petitions. I'm going to do uh, quite a bit of menuing right here. Uh, right now I'm destroying stuff for mana. Um, but what you could do right here um, is to save quit the game, uh, close the game entirely and reload it to reset your RNG seed. And then you can re-enter Melm. Uh, and as long as you're coming in on a blank RNG seed, um, you get two free Anamaros from the first floor of Melm. Uh, and that stops you from having to do an Anamaru farm later. You basically only need enough of uh, the Witch Petition items to um, continue through. Uh, this friend doesn't do it because I hadn't found it yet. Um, like I did not realize there was such an easy um, RNG manipulation for Anamaru's. Um, I haven't done a run with that change yet, sadly. So I can't really show. Um, so we're continuing into the dungeon. I don't do my Anamaru farm. Um, until after the main boss is dead. That's just in case, like, while I'm walking, um, I could find Anamaros, but that no longer really matters since the Anamaru farm has been, um, removed in favor of the RNG manipulation. Um... But yeah, you would just full reset your game, and then there are two spots on the first floor. Uh, one of them is just to the right of where you come in, and um, the other one is while you are walking through the dungeon. It will basically be picked up automatically. Um, so they are very, very free, and they just completely remove the um, Anamaro Seed farm. So it's pretty nice. So this time into the dungeon is basically just pushing the story as far as we can um, until we're forced to go somewhere else. Um, we don't get a ton of items. I do believe we collect our first silver spoon here. It should be just across the hallway from where I am. Um, although I believe there's, yeah, there was a movement mistake right there. So I'm forced to fight this troll, and I believe it has consequences for my run. Um, we're going to skip forward a little bit because that's not a planned part of the run. I end up leaving the dungeon here. Um, just because I had a uh, stench and couldn't see my enemies. Um, but just after that combat, I grabbed, uh, it was back in that cubby, there was a silver spoon. Those will be useful later, as um, I'm sure will be obvious. Um, I usually uh, take this fight in this cave to unstack. Um, but since I was forced back earlier, this is actually a mistake to grab this fight. It was just muscle memory, I assume. Um... I grab a red mantle there just because they're pretty good for mages. It's not mandatory by any stretch, but it's just so quick to pick up. 
grab the story spot. This one you can skip. The next one you actually have to read a little, then skip. Take some full damage there. This one you have to hit yes on this dialogue or it doesn't clear the trigger. We're going to fall one more time. Make sure I have a puppet that will survive. Guaranteed. So we're basically just moving into the area where we want to drop my next mud portal, making as much progress as we can, and then um, dropping this portal, grabbing some items, one of them being an amulet. We immediately put it on because we love amulets. And leaving. Um, we might make puppets here. Um, this is one spot where I do make puppets if I don't have all of the puppets I want. Uh, yeah, I destroy that barrel. I'm trying to get up to um, I believe 14. Yeah, I think it's 14 puppets. Should be all of my tanks, asters, and mages built. Um, I make my tanks um, basically the same as I used to, except for instead of putting them as wise. Um, I put them as uh, brave. So I should be looking for one more puppet to round out my core squad. I build my tanks last because they need the least bit of EXP to do their job. They are meat shields. They're built really well to be meat shields, so I just don't require much. Um, this mini boss is really, really easy. He has one move that can really do damage, and it goes off in either two or three turns, so unless he does two of them in a row and they are both two turn attacks, that fight is pretty much free. Um, this fight just has some unfortunate RNG. It can do a lot of status effects. Um, that don't really affect the combat. They just take a while to like be applied. Because every time it applies a status effect, it's it uh, eats like a half second. Not even a half second. I think it's probably like 0.3 seconds. Um... But it goes down like a sack of potatoes. Isn't really much of a threat unless it does. Muddy grep. Um, make sure we unstack there. Um, and that we have a mud portal sitting on the ground behind us. We grabbed our third mud portal before um, or after our first trip into Melm. Um, we're headed back to Astrum to grab a story item. We're going to do the same in Campanula. We grab these star run shoes because they can be disenchanted for a large mana value um, for getting our fourth portal. Um, I don't do that until after I'm done with Melm because you don't need your fourth portal uh, until you get into Verdant Phenom. Um, so you can just delay that need. Um... On our way to this next story item, we're going to be picking up and uh, immediately equipping another amulet that's in the wall here. Is a high rarity and a pretty good one. So we throw that on. Um, 
catch up our story, and then we're going to just rush in the Malm. That should be all of our like item-driven story parts, so we can just drive through the rest of this. Um, we're going to be stacking all the way up to the boss. We want to, like, ideally, we want to be able to stack the boss's exp at the very end once our multiplier has been um, uh, has been escalated, and then. There's actually a, an encounter in that room, a miniature encounter, that is really easy. Um, it almost feels like the game designers had kind of intended you to stack your way here, stack the boss, and then have that mini mob to unstack on. But uh, that's, that's probably just paranoid of me. But it's just so well placed, everything is, and like the back end of Malm for speedrunning. It's a little hard not to think that someone um, had kind of intended it that way. Especially since the encounter um, doesn't even include golems. It can literally uh, only be crabs um, and anamaros, and I think there's a small, small, small chance at mini troll which is a pushover with how much um, pierce damage we bring. Um, I update the lances because I grabbed a rusty lance in that room. Um, I believe that's the last time I do any messing with my uh, gear and Malm. Um, so as we're walking through this floor, we're going to place a mud portal instead of touching the teleporter. Um, that is just so we can continue stacking. We'll come back to that portal later after we're done with the boss. We didn't grab the man on the wall out of necessity. It was mostly just because it was there. Um, I ran into a lot of encounters up to this point, which is uh, a little unfortunate. Not sure why I only did one attack there. Probably conserving mana for the boss, but it was a little slow. So I try to get the the um, encounter in that room following me when I go into this boss fight. So this boss is uh, the first boss that has a chance at killing you. You basically just try to rush through its health as fast as possible. Um, when these two puppets get below half, like they're approaching right now, I'm going to start defending with them. Um, that You don't want any puppets to die in this fight when you're stacking, otherwise they're going to miss out on a bunch of EXP. Um, yeah, I start blocking immediately. Um, and it pays off. They would have taken much more damage. Um, so there's a chance that if uh, how this fight goes... If you push it under a certain HP value too quickly, and then you don't have um, enough damage to burst out, he's going to start Murmurs and Evil Incantation, and if he finishes that, which I believe he does, it's a full team wipe. Uh, basically one shots, yeah. I didn't have enough damage to finish the fight, and he uh, didn't do 
Um, so it takes four turns for it, him to do that attack. Um, and if he starts uh, casting it at the beginning of his turn, he, he actually has a chance of getting it off. Um, but if he does uh, one of his attacks and then starts it on his second turn in a turn, which sounds kind of weird, but he gets two turns in a turn, um, it will take him uh, the end of his first turn, two whole turns, and then he'll do it uh, on his third turn charging it, which is your best case scenario. Uh, I got really unlocked, or I guess I slammed my head into a wall. I was a little unpracticed when I was coming through here on this run. Um, mistake got me under these two rounds of combat. Oh no, I did actually have to go through that wall. It was just unfortunate that I got caught. It's pretty common when you drop that portal there that you get at least one bout of combat. Um, I grabbed my frail pack, which I must have picked up somewhere. Uh, or picked up the spotted egg. Um, to exchange for the frail. But yeah, really unfortunate dying to um that boss. It's pretty uncommon, but it it is like the first boss where you do just have a real chance of getting um an unfortunate an unfortunate fight. Um, I haven't go, gone over my packed choices. I probably should have done that. So uh, in my first um, so in my first slot I have frail pack. This is basically just a mob clear pact. Uh, then my second one is a boss killer. Basically, most of the bosses in this game um, will take physical damage. At, at, at bare minimum, they take it at a neutral. Um, and most of them have some kind of uh, weakness to either slash or stabbing. So this pack basically just does a bunch of slash and stabbing. They can also do um, some wave clear if you run into mobs that are magic resistant that your frail doesn't easily deal with. Um, this is uh, which squad you get it from beating Pecorino. It is just an automatic drop from defeating Pecorino. Um, these two, the game gives you, these are witch troops. Uh, same with this one, but I don't use its donum really, unless uh, something requires healing. Like there's, there would be a chance that I would, if like it, this puppet didn't have parts broken, that I would uh, attempt to heal um, the puppet. But considering I am not stacked anymore, I'm not doing safety strats. Also, they had um, the uh, donumize debuff. Uh, this game's version of Silence. Um, I top off that thing's HP. I guess I was stacking a little bit. Um, but yeah, this, just making sure my pup doesn't get sniped from these really fast animaros. Um, unstack. This is probably a really bad melm. You pick up your third Atomaro seed. Uh, if you did the manipulation, you would be at three right now, and that's how many you need for your apprentice notes. Um, doing story stuff. I believe this run has something like a three minute um, Anamaru farm. Um, so between the end of Melm and the beginning of Verdant Phenom, you want to pick up your fourth portal. It costs like 11 grand in mana, and you need to disenchant a fair bit of stuff to get it. Um, which is why I picked up things like the Star Run shoes, extra amulets um, from Astrum. Um, just to make sure I have items to disenchant. Uh, I'm actually over 11.6. I'm pretty sure at some point I'll 
uh, some point during my Sadness Seed run or my Sadness Seed farm, I will um, pack up my fourth portal. Uh, I'm going to skip forward until my Sadness Seed farm is done. Okay, we're going to pack up just a little bit. Oh, how far is it skipping ahead? A minute? Uh... Okay. I'm not sure if I... Because I saw having 11 grand mana, so I'm not sure if I bought my fourth, because you... I don't think you'd have enough extra to just like buy it twice. So there's a chance that this run didn't have um, the fourth portal that you want. Um, your first time into Verdant is basically just pushing story. You don't really get too many items. You'll get a Witch's Bell. Um, you aren't really looking for any packs through here. These packs do really well through Verdant. Um, there was one pack that we picked up from defeating the last boss. It was the Veterans Pack, and we'll be using that. Um, it's really good because Magi Tumblers suck. Um, I'm sure we will find some magi tumblers and I will elaborate on that thought of magi tumblers sucking. Uh, we'll do a little bit of stacking. Once we make it about halfway through this area, we'll probably unstack. Um, I'll grab some shoes there just because we don't get many shoes. Um, oh, these are one of the Ida or one of the enemies that you prefer to do physical damage on. Frail pack just does not clear them in a single shot. Um, so, uh, another reason why the Japanese runners, uh, use of Witch Squad was so good. I actually stole that from him. Um, like the Frail Pact, uh, I don't think the Japanese runner ever ran. This has been my own little contribution. Um, but these three, the Witch Squads and Witch Troops, um, were all his brainchild. It was a really good, um, a really good addition to the run, in my opinion. He had a really good pack choice, um, but he would, I don't remember, like, I don't remember what he would run instead of, like, my frail. Um, I would have to rewatch one of his runs. Oh, I actually do remember. He used to run Red Goat. Yeah. And that was never a pack twist I agreed with. It Like, it does bring blunt damage, but I just don't think blunt and fire damage um, just does super well in boss fights. Like, it does really well in uh, the second boss fight in this area on the B. The B is weak to both of those types. But um, Lamudon is not particularly weak to blunt damage, so you just lose damage in a lot of places. Um, I think in the troll fight, you also lost damage. The uh, troll fight that I lost to the troll shaman. Oh, Lamudon is super easy. Um, th there is one very, very small percentage. Uh, way that you can get like, like you can lose some puppets, but I, I don't actually think it's possible to lose around Lamudon. I mean, unless you did something really, really bad. It's... Even eating this rampage isn't that bad. 
since Lamiodon only has one turn. And if it could do that move twice in a row, you would be in much worse shape, but it just can't. Having the poison uh, whacking you every turn is annoying. Um, so we go about throwing in our veteran pact because, like I said before, magic tumblers suck. And uh, so they take blunt damage at something like five. It's between three to five times bonus damage. And they take like every other single other source of damage um, at somewhere between like 0.3 and 0.5. So they are just absolutely abysmal to kill unless you have blunt damage and it was a really weird thing that there's that just several enemies that are like that they're um like barely vulnerable to damage unless you completely rock their world with blunt damage it was it was just a really unique thing about this game that i'd never seen in any other game like blunt damage throughout most of the game is meh until you find one of those enemies that you can absolutely just crack open like quite literally just crack open with blunt damage um so one interesting thing is um if you walk all the way so if you don't stack at the beginning of this trip into variant phenom even though you're walking all the way to the boss until you've touched the portal um the end of this map a bunch of enemies will despawn like just an entire the entire upper left quadrant of enemies will despawn right in front of you um so i i found that little bit of like manipulation it's not even rng manipulation it is just enemies despawn manipulation um, um so that is a magi tumbler no one likes magi tumblers crunch yay that is why we have the veteran pact um there's one uh fight that through here through the back end of verdant phenom i guess it's the back half yeah you just watch that thing despawn that was because i got here on a certain step timer um by going for the portal like i did uh, i used to have a route where i would drop a mud portal um where i would start stacking immediately drop a mud portal and then come back to the mud portal and i realized i was getting more encounters and i didn't understand why um, and then I realized that it, there was just a certain step counter that despawned the enemies at the end of that map. So it's a uh, time save. It, it doesn't look like a time save. It Like if you know that you can use portals, it looks kind of stupid. Um, but it is actually a time save through uh, spawn manipulation. Oh, but I thought I cut off halfway. There's one uh, encounter that you really don't want to get through the back half of this, and that is um, five Magi Tumblers in three different rows. It is an absolutely awful fight, and it is so mana intensive that if you get more than one of them, your run is over. Like, you can get a lot of the fights through here, Except for two sets of uh, five magic tumblers that will actually just end your run. Um, I'm saving a lot of mana on my frail pact because uh, frail pact is so expensive. Unless your fairy pact that you got at the or the fairy amulet you got at the very beginning of the game was absolutely loaded on mana getting her to something like 800-ish, um, just not casting with your frail through this part 
because you just need so much mana for the final boss. And Frail is so expensive. Um, when you don't have a boss fight at like the very end of your um like at the end of your uh, path uh frail ends up being more beneficial but right now frail's actually a little bit of a handicap through this part but i like having frail for this fight for the the very the much english is hard for the higher chance of poisoning this boss cuz uh, getting this boss to lose a turn to poison is really good. Um, we do a quick equipment thing right there, putting on any red mantles we had collected. Um, I think that's about the only item I guarantee pick up. Um, so the first turn of this boss is is completely scripted. He'll always do pheromone spray to increase his uh, stats. So you can just abuse that and um, attack with your asters on the first turn every turn after that you want to guard because this thing hits like a freight train and your asters have no armor um and they'll be taking unless you get really bad rng uh they'll be taking the vast majority of the damage in this fight yeah so ravaging devourer will either hit frontline or backline and usually it's frontline about two-thirds of the time Um, that's your preferred scenario. Also, big chin, tri uh, big chin strike should always be frontline. Um, I'm actually replacing a puppet in there. That's really rare to see in a fight. Um, but this fight isn't too hard unless he guard rates you really hard and runs you out of mana. Um, there's a slim chance of that. Sadly, I lost a poppet, but I stacked all the way here. I didn't have a five magic tumbler fight, and I have enough mana to unstack uh, on the creatures outside. Well, actually, it's just unstack on that fight. Okay. So I was doing this a slightly more um, express way. Um, I put my asters in my phalanx. Um, I'm not sure why I'm putting them in that formation right now. Um, I just mud exit out. You can also stack that boss um, and uh, drag the bonus EXP out to another combat, but there is a chance of a five Magi Tumbler fight. I've never had it happen after stacking this boss, but I do know there, that there is a chance. So I personally just avoid it in this run, but there are variations you can do. Um, I do my weed farm here, but I believe I already checked my inventory to see if I had the, is it... oh, I only have three withered weeds, okay. So I do not have enough withered weeds to complete my weed, complete my weed farm. Um, that was something I should have checked. So you always do your weed farm at the end of Verdant Feed On because you can get withered weeds in Verdant. Uh, I believe every... No, it's only the first two floors have a chance of giving you withered weeds. I believe it falls off the loot table on the third and fourth floor in favor of Verdant Feed On's unique items. But I could also be wrong about that. It's been a long time since I've looked at the table. But that's what like my gut is telling me. I, I believe in my gut. It's pretty knowledgeable at games. Um, so I'm coming back to do my weed farm. I actually don't remember how many of them I need. I don't think it's 10. I think it's 8. I could be completely wrong, though. We'll just see how many I 
a grab here. But yeah, your ideal is that you never have to do a weed farm here and that you just picked up enough of them passively, uh, which is why we waited so long to... Um... Okay, I actually didn't need that many. I think you need six. Um, what am I desynthesizing? A pickaxe for a soul? Uh, and then I'm picking up my last tank. I did realize that I hadn't picked up a tank. Um, so nature-wise was something I used to do when uh, I needed my tanks to have more mana. Since it augments the amount of stats you get for items. Um... Um, oh, okay, so I'm throwing my tanks in now, um, just so I can protect my mages in the, um, the Furia, or not Furious, uh, the Feet Fight, yeah, I'm just gonna call it the Feet Fight, I forget her name. Um... Okay, I, I have no idea what this move is, other than I think the tank was really low level. That's probably why I moved the Nastra in there. It's just it had more meat for taking hits. This fight is ridiculously easy. If you get some good crits, you can one-turn this fight. You basically just do wall-to-wall -wall attacks. I don't even know why I'm fortifying here. Like, basically, this thing can't really hurt you. I got a first turn poison, that's a little bit of extra damage. Um, if you kept your asters, um, so you, like swapping the tanks here isn't mandatory, it's just a little safer for the feet fight. Um, also, I have tanks in the back line and mages in the front line, that's a mistake. I needed to swap the uh, rear guard for front guard on my two uh, packs on the right. Um, okay, now I've moved them to Vanguard. And moved them. I, I'm not sure why I'm doing a bunch of weird stuff with my packs other than I've uh, made a really late tank. Um, so I hadn't picked up an extra silver spoon up till this point. If I had, I think I would have used a silver spoon um, on this floor. Um, so, because I didn't get a, an extra silver spoon to this point, um, I lose time. These things are really tough on the guard, right? Um, yeah, we, we picked up an, an, a scripted silver spoon. We're basically saving silver spoons for the end of the game to skip as much of the end of this game as we can. Um, we basically skip all of Amadeus. There is there is no combat whatsoever in Amadeus outside of the um outside of the base floor. Um, I guess it would be called the first floor. Um, we skip all of that combat. We skip all but the first floor of Rosa Tempest and we skip everything but the first floor of Duskantanus. So We'll be skipping a whole lot of this game once we get to a certain point. Um, basically, uh, 
the reason behind that is um, that they don't end in boss fights, and Rosa Tempest especially doesn't have very good EXP gains. Um, and once we get to around 36, or we ideally want to get to about 40, but I think this run only gets like around between 34 and level 36. Um, basically, we're just trying to skip as much of the game as we can, and uh, you can beat the game at an obscenely low level, uh, at least on easy. Um, so, I'm getting a lot of fights through here. I, I, I was probably worried about my mana through this part. Um, if I would have had the Silver Spoon um, in the spot where I was talking about it, where I started talking about it, there's a good chance that it would have lasted all the way into this next mini boss fight. Um, most of the time it runs out somewhere on this floor and I have to do at least like one thing of combat, but um, there are times where I can make it last all the way through ready. Um, I'll probably speak about how they work later when I start using them. I'll have a lot of time to just kind of gammer um, around Rosa Tempest. Uh, the ready fight is really easy. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is uh, male tail. It'll make ready's fire attack actually do damage. And that's if you see a male tail, you have to start blocking with your mages, or start blocking with your tanks, or anyone on the front line who's susceptible to fire. Your mages are pretty fire resistant, but your tanks and asters aren't. Very much aren't. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing, other than randomly swapping the order. Um, yeah, that was, that was a wee bit random for me on this run. I probably figured this run was dead and was just doing it for the practice, uh, since I had such an atrocious melm. Um, um. So this fight, basically, the foot just does a pretty good amount of damage. So if you block with, yeah, like that. Um, so if you block, you spend most of your time blocking with your tanks. Uh, the fight gets over with pretty quickly, just because you have really good damage types to get rid of it. Um, but you definitely need to exercise some caution or you'll end up with dead puppets. Um, so we walk in here, we grab all of these shields on the floor, and it looks really weird grabbing a bunch of shields when we don't have people who like really use shields outside of Asters. Um, but that is because those are decent shields. They actually give a boatload of mana, and that was found by the Japanese runner. Um, another thing that I stole from him, because at the top of this you do a big old descent. Um, getting rid of Velcro. It's not Velcrovrana amulets, what are they? They're the unlucky amulets that you're given. I don't know them when I see them. Um, uh, you're getting rid of those, but the shields actually give more per descent, meaning you have to do less descents. So uh, picking up those shields both guarantees that you absolutely have uh, enough items to descent, because you could, you used to be able to come up short 
um, if you're having a bad mana run. Um, that's no longer possible. Um, and also lets us do it in fewer descents and maintain more of our items. Um, Getting to the end of this tower is always a wee bit worrisome, because after you've done three boss fights, um, you don't really have the spare mana for mobs. Managing to um, give that mob the uh, okie doke always feels good. Okay, that should be Red Tower done. We've dropped a couple portals in here for later, coming back and doing story stuff. Um, this is another place that benefits really heavily from having four portals. Um, we're going to do some decents here. This uh, We already have our main core of 14 puppets. This is mostly just for junk puppets later. Yeah, this is um, the appearance that I use for junk puppets. I think I probably make two here. One, because I'm soul. Uh, I only have two souls and... Um, because I believe that fills up all of the rest of the open slots with um, poppet stamp damage. Um, so we put on a bunch of those rustic items that we get. Um, usually I descent before I come do uh... ah sturdy fur first charms. That's what they are. Usually I do the shields first. I'm surprised I didn't do that in this round. It's generally better to do the shields first. Um, you can also, like, those shields aren't bad if you want to try to hang on to them. Uh, or hang on to as many as you can. Um, so that your uh, asters can use them. I think I had forgotten about the shields, yeah. I believe I was going back and... Uh... But yeah, after the Fur Fur Charms, I didn't have enough. You need uh, 53,333 to get all of the things that you require. You need... Get more, uh, more formations, I think, three times... Um, and then you get Nullify Miasma, so that you don't take uh, damage and poison in the basement. Because um, even though you could get through the basement uh, with the poison uh, status and taking damage, um, you actually just lose time uh, having to repeatedly go into your inventory to heal one or more puppets to the point where they can survive. Uh... And it would send you back to base, I believe, an extra time before you got to the Fly Queen fight. Um, I haven't been touching on objectives, really. Um, like, now that we've gotten the huge influx of items at the top of Red Tower, uh... Basically, our, our, our objective from now until the end of the game is pushing story as aggressively as possible. Like, we're not going out of our way for items. And that's basically all we've been doing the, the entire time is, like, mostly uh, story and with very, very small, like, incredibly small detours for items. So, just assume that if that theme is continuing unless like I say otherwise um so this is actually a really hard floor to get no encounters on usually you'll get like one encounter 
I'm not sure if that route that I found there was something that can be repeated or was just a, a lucky one and done. Um, because I remember I was trying to find uh ways to get that um repeatable. So the formation that I got earlier, um, or the formation that I wanted to get uh earlier was the Donum Defense formation. Um and this means that my back line right now has 70% more totem damage, um, which is amazing. Um, it is very important for stat multiplication reasons. Um, it, it's one of the things that allows me to actually finish this game. Um, So, this tower is one of the more relaxing towers. There's no super bad fights in here. I grabbed this Umbra wine for the apprentice notes later. Um, you noticed, probably noticed how I did isn't talking much about apprentice notes and Verdant feed on. Um, it doesn't have any really good farming spots in Verdant Phenom to get Apprentice Note items, and there really aren't many. A lot of the Apprentice Notes uh, items are in uh, Astrum and Melm, are huge for Apprentice Notes, and a lot of the rest of the stuff you can just kind of pick up off the floor um, by walking through areas, getting them from combat, from various enemies. Um, but yeah, this is uh, why we picked up Nullify Miasmas. This floor is just entirely full of Miasma. We just don't have the puppet health to walk through here. Uh, put down a portal for later since our way out of um, uh, since we'll be using that later on our way out. Um, we head back to base, and this is mostly for the reinforcements. Um, I didn't really lose enough mana to need to go back. Um, so, but we do need the reinforcements, and we do want to do a little packed stuff, but it's mostly just, uh how much wall breaking we have to do to do this place optimally. Um, so um, Kabota's Pacts actually do really well through here also. Um, the Fly Queen actually was one of the fights that I used to dread because I used a lot more um, magical Pacts, more things like Frail, I would use mage packs. I would hold on to those for a really long time. Um, and uh, he showed me the way of just using physical packs because they're just so much more consistent through the game. Um, I grab a witch's bell just because uh, I need them in a Marius. Um, I believe you need five witches' bells to complete Amadeus properly, but I'm not completely sure on that. I think I also use one at the top of this tower. Um, so you need a, a lot of witches' bells so that you don't have to keep exploding yourself and wasting your resources. And uh, throwing away items because you don't want to be throwing away items anymore. We have like decent items. There's always kind of a chance that we're holding some good items at any given time. So the less we have to explode ourselves once we've started really collecting items, the better. Um, throw my tank in now that it is. Uh, 
no longer of detriment to have on the front line. Um, this should be the Fly Queen. Physical damage does really well here. Um, I think her first turn is always the exact same thing, so you can be really greedy. Um, it isn't until uh, she starts blinking red that she's even a threat. All of these fly attacks are really weak. Um, having Donum Defense by this part uh, lets you wipe out the front line with Frail Pact. Meaning you can just queue up all the rest of your attacks on the queen. Hmm. I just paused. This run was clearly not valid. Okay, getting back to it. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Someone might have needed something from me pretty urgently right there. It's the only reason I really pause runs and keep recording. So this was never intended to be a valid or yeah, valid run for the board. It's just a practice run. Um, but yeah, basically the queen fight is really easy. Once she starts blinking red, you just block with your tanks. Otherwise, you just go full ham. Um, it used to be harder when I didn't have the right damage types to finish that fight quickly. In fact, I think Kabota's route saved like a minute. I'm going to use my first um, Silver Spoon here. Uh, one, I don't have tons of mana, and B, the Blue Spartans are really friggin' tanky with a really high guard rate, and they're really friggin' annoying. They're in all the places I want to be. They're just not fun. So I don't deal with them. And this, uh, this silver spoon saves, I believe, three to four minutes. Just, I think on average it saves about two and a half minutes, but I think um, it can save upwards of three or four if you get really bad RNG. Um, so we pick up Dance of the Dolls there. That's for an apprentice note. Uh, you can pick up Dance of the Dolls from the shop. Um, but I prefer to pick it up there just because I'm going to be here with a uh, silver spoon on anyway. Always make sure you talk to King Alice. Um, because if you don't do this dialogue right, you have to fight him. Um, yeah, we use a witch's belt at the top here because we should have, I believe, all of our portals down in meaningful places. Uh, oh no, we were actually out of reinforcements, that's right. That's why we do it. Herp, herp, I played this game. Um, grab a bunch of items. That's a bunch more souls for disenchanting later. Um, we get our scripted save. We get tossed to the main menu. Um, now we should be finishing up Umbra. Umbra is the longest, both both casually and on the speed run. It always feels really good to get out of Umbra, especially since like Rosaria, um, or Rose Tempest Memoria, is where we start mashing our silver spoons. Um, so we've basically been saving up silver spoons up till this point using our extras uh, where it's convenient to save the most time. And we've only had, you only have one extra up to this point because you want, um, so 
there should be seven floors of Rosaria's. You want at least six. Your ideal is seven. Um, uh, seven silver spoons for the entirety of Rosa Tempest. That way you just don't have to deal with the absurd amounts of bees, the, 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 the shark things, the really hard to avoid encounters. There, there, there's just so much crap. And especially, especially the pink friggin' blocks. We do not like pink friggin' blocks. They are basically just annoying magi tumblers. Um, you'll actually see that I moved my frail to the front line. So um, it looks like an odd move, but I actually don't need my frail to do that much damage. I picked up an extra silver spoon. Not an extra, that's a scripted silver spoon that I always grab. That gets me through another floor of Rosa Tempest. Um, so every floor except this one that I'm on, because you can't pop them before you come in, and they require a floor transition to work properly. Um, I should actually probably go about explaining how they work properly. So when you pop a silver spoon, it stops things from spawning. And when I go up a floor or down a floor, um, using like a set of stairs, it forces everything to spawn on the first turn. Basically everything takes its first turn at the same time, and all of my enemies have to spawn on their first turn on the map. So uh, if I tell them that they cannot spawn, they must obey. Um, so that's the first property. Um, the second property... Um, and it, it actually reads really weird. Um, so it reads that your enemies can't spawn for 100 steps, but that is not technically accurate as to how they work. So you do get 100 steps of your enemies can't spawn, but you also get an, a you also get an extra random amount of steps. So, a silver spoon can last between 100 minimum or 200 steps maximum. You, you can basically get a second random silver spoon out of it if you're really lucky. Um, and I actually sat down and mashed out the average, and on average a silver spoon gives you about 144 steps. Um, it's weighted a little bit under 150. So I popped my first silver spoon. And I, I'm, I'm able to just walk through this floor. Um, every single floor of Rosa Tempest, uh, except for the final one, which requires uh, two spoons always. It's over um, the 200 steps, I believe. I haven't calculated it out. It might be about 200 steps exactly uh, to get through the seventh floor. Um, but I actually think, so, um, second floor uh, gets a spoon, third, fourth, and fifth all get their uh, silver spoons. So I lost, ooh, no, I don't, I don't pop it there. Okay. Um, so uh, every single one of these floors is basically going to get its own unique spoon until I get to the sixth floor. I think what I was doing on this particular route was um, the sixth and seventh floor can be completed by popping three spoons in a row. When you see the chat box uh, that says your silver spoon has worn off, um, the enemy hasn't gotten to take in its turn yet. So they haven't spawned when that message is on screen. If you are to move again uh, after you see that message, they, they will all spawn and start moving. Um, but while the message is on screen and on that, uh, that turn, so to speak, um, 
they haven't spawned. So you can immediately pop a spoon, even though you lost the effect of your previous, to um, to basically keep the enemies unspawned. So you can use uh, three spoons on the final um, the final two floors, and that should always, as far as I've ever run, it always gets you uh, to the end. Ooh, wow, this spoon ran out really quickly. So like you saw me do right there, is I saw the message, I didn't um, take another step, and that actually uh, wore off really quickly. I'm not sure if I'll have the spoons to make it all the way to the end without um, any more encounters. So we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. I know there's, you get at least one more spoon through here, but now that I'm chain popping spoons, instead of popping them um, at a specific spot, um, I basically have to continue that uh, trend. So, um, and I have to be very careful whenever an item appears on screen because uh, the spoon message can actually kind of hide behind and if I'm mashing A and don't see the double message, um, uh, you can basically just lose an entire floor of um, encounters. You also don't want to do what I did right there, which was grab mana, um, because it can also hide under those messages and those waste turns. Uh, luckily, it didn't happen to me there. It's really rare that like it'll sync up with like an item grab, forced or unforced, or like grab the reversing message, but it can. So you just kind of have to be cognizant of it. Um, and this is actually uh, the the spoon, uh, the chain spoon usage. Um, is actually something I learned from the Japanese runner too. I would just pop one at the beginning of every floor and it got me as far as it got me. And I just kind of uh, took um, whatever uh, risk there was on the end of the floor. But realistically using them uh, like right when the previous one finishes is probably the most economical way to get through uh, Rosa Tempest and probably the most consistent way. Um, like I, I think when I was running it, I was a pretty stubborn to my old ways of just popping them at the beginning of every floor, even if my previous hadn't run out. Um, oh yeah, I might run out. Unless I have two really, really good ones, but I mean, so far I haven't seen a pink friggin' block, so it's been a good Rose Tempest so far. Like that is basically your entire uh, end all be all of Rosa Tempest is how many pink blocks did you see? How many B encounters did you get on the first floor? We have White Rose pack there, that's one of our end game packs. Um, I feel like I've skipped over so much in terms of like strategy. We're basically still running the exact same packs. Um, uh, I guess one thing to note is that the reason why we use this particular composition of units, obviously we need tanks to protect our mages. Um, but the reason why we're using mages is because they only really require one item to become functional, and that is an amulet. Uh, most of the other classes to reach the same efficiency as a mage require a lot more investment in terms of items and would require a lot more routing and running. So mages are just so economical. And uh, because of how mages work, with um, uh, their passives stacking and how the Donum Defense Formation buffs them so much. Uh, they just become so naturally strong with such low investment that they are uh, absolutely amazing for speedrunning, even though they have a really hard like their percent chance to gore crit is like absolutely abysmal and like thinking about it up front you might think that like fishing for gore crits um 
since they're going to do percent HP damage, would be you know a viable strategy. But this just turns out to be more consistent than any kind of um, gore crit fishing that I've ever found. Um, but to be fair, I, I haven't tested... Um, like, I haven't come up with any rivaling theories um, outside of trying to item buff a bunch. Uh, which was a mildly interesting strategy. Uh, was trying to stuff all of my EXP onto a single puffet, puppet and then buff it to oblivion and try to smack around bosses like that. But I never got the I never got into the really hard testing of that strategy. Um, just because it's so much harder to buff physical creatures or physical puppets than it is. Um, mage puppets. Amadeus Necropolis is like obscenely boring to everyone but the speedrunner of this game like i i'm pretty sure if i went into my youtube and i checked like what parts of the videos people watched just like they probably watched two rosa tempest and then realized that i was just going to cheese the entirety of rosa tempest stopped watching came back at amadeus and realized that i was doing the same thing and probably skipped like all the way to the final boss <laughs> because like with the um, no uh, or with silver spoons, like Amadius is horribly dull. It's just me dashing in and out of portals. Um, like unless you have the investment that you are actually going to be, you know, playing the game, speed running the game, you're interested in the optimization that's been done because you have an understanding of the game. God. Amadeus and Rosa Tempest must be so horribly dull. Because I like I am literally just doing story stuff. Like that like that is Amadeus is I believe like eight minutes of story. <laughs> like um like I'm I collect spoons here. Um I collect one pact in the basement, and that is the Witch Brigade, and that is for uh, the final fight. Um, yeah, outside of those things, it's I, I collect th four or five spoons here. I think four spoons. Yeah, it's either four or five. Um, but I collect some spoons here, but that's that, that is basically all of Amadeus Necropolis. Um, it's it's really just not that interesting. Um, just popping in and out of portals, having my portals in the right spots for coming back to. Yeah. Knowing where I need to be next. Um, so, like, Amadeus is, is a great place to just start skipping ahead. Um, because you can skip every encounter in the basement. Yeah. It is just very, very dull. Uh, you can use one silver spoon on every floor here, and it should get you to the end. Um, you can also just chain three together. It's whatever your preference is. Um, okay, our second trip into Campanula. Is there anything interesting? Just basically going to talk to the Fairy King. Um, we should be skipping encounters. 
It only requires one spoon to get all the way to the Fairy King because of how easy the routing is. You can do just a bunch of falling through the floor. There's a really, there's a lot of really close um, stairs. Uh, we're checking right now how many apprentice notes we can unlock. Um, oh, I should have checked how many withered weeds I need. I think it was six. I believe it was six. Um, drink on desires. We picked up Umbra wine back in Umbra. Don't forget where you find green shoes. We make sure we have a witch's bell for Shepherd's job. It's another reason why we pick up a bunch of bunch of them. Is because we need them even after Marius. Okay, we got the uh, the key right there that gets us. Um... Oh Lord. Leave it Sage's key gets us Furious key gets us Sage's Pact. So Um so on our way down, that's one thing that we do have to do on Flare Fairy King's floor is to um drop a portal for our sages. Um, that'll lead us into our, one, one of the more difficult fights in the game. You don't really worry, have to worry about the, um, taking fall damage right there. Since, uh, there, there's just no encounters with a silver spoon. Um, there's some items next to the Fairy King that we'll pick up. I believe we pick up a, like a, uh, chest body. I believe you need the Sage's key to grab it, though. So if you didn't, um, have your apprentice notes completed up to this point, I believe it's right here. Yeah, Secret Garden. Um, we don't have to fight the Fairy King because we did Domina's quest stuff. Um, we're going to the assembly. Right now we're just building up, um, backline pop-ups for the, um, passive damage bonus to Donum. Um... I believe we want 24 poppets. So we're just going to boost our poppets to either 24 or 25, depending on if we want to put one in Lucky Pact. Um, so it's just basically a lot of generics right here. Um, you can put mage puppets in the back line. And their passive will increase any dotum cast, even uh, while they're sitting on the back line. That is another reason mages are so good. Um, so you can do 24, 25. The 25th will give your uh, lucky pack a higher chance to critical. Um, based on the luck value of the puppet in the back line. It'll also increase the damage slightly, but you don't really rely too heavily on um, backline puppet damage. Or backline, or lucky packed damage. It is, like, it's not a bad source of damage, it's just that neither blunt or mud damage are very effective against Velcavrana. So you're mostly just crit fishing with it, and it has a decently good uh, inherent crit chance. Um, we're doing our big packed swap here because um, 
Uh, boss fights give more packed EXP, even though this boss doesn't give any actual EXP, it gives a bunch of packed EXP. I believe each boss fight is something like plus 50 EXP. Um, and that's really important for lowering the cost. Um, because we need to fit a bunch of really expensive and good packs. Um, along with a, I believe, 50 or 49 cost Sages packed in right now. Our Brigade cost is 77, so we can bring that down with a boss fight. And we also need to use these packs just because they are um, strong on this boss fight is very difficult. Um, you can, it's really easily easy to end up in an unwinnable scenario if, like, her first turn she debuffs you. Um, or gets really nasty wall to wall crits. Yeah, right now, like, this is un, like, debuffed, and it does a real big chunk to mages. I need to finish this fight, like, as fast as possible. Um, like, I don't even think it's worth it to try to heal, um, in this fight. Uh, because, like, every single turn, you are very likely to just get decimated. Oh, this is the riskiest turn as the third one, after you've already taken two full... Rounds of Punishment. Oh, she does a double hit here. I lost two pop-outs. Three pop-outs, yeah. It's really easy, and she has a guard rate, too. But luckily, Witch Brigade and um, White Rose have her elemental weaknesses in uh, Slash, Stab, and Fire. Um... So, it's not, like, the hardest fight in here. That obviously belongs to the last boss. Um, but it is uh, pretty difficult. Um, oh, and I was... Was I wrong? It would have been 27. So the cost of my packs, I believe, got reduced by 10 just from that fight. We'll get a couple of fights on this floor. Then we shouldn't see combat until the final boss. Um, so... Do, do, do. I believe uh, we have all but one of the packs that we're going to be finishing the game with. So we have um, uh, Witch Brigade and uh, White Rose. These are just full damage packs, packed with a bunch of uh, backup puppets to increase damage. And then we have uh, Lucky Packed over here, which is a... So it's a really strong pact um, in and of itself, just damage-wise, but it also brings blunt damage. So when you're walking through Dusk and Tannis, there's a chance at getting um, mana stones. Um, and anything that would be even slightly weak to uh, uh, blunt, it's always nice to have a blunt source like on hand so you don't have to like waste a bunch of turns and time. Um, in the final boss, it's generally a crit fishing pact. Um, it's also a pact that uh, is really hard to kill, since it has the chance to um, just let the puppets survive with 1 HP um, for a bunch of hits in a row, even if they would have taken fatal damage. Um, like, it's a really weird pact. It's a really strong pact. Uh, but you don't really put a ton of resources into it because it's not a like an eight puppet pact so it just doesn't multiply out as well as uh these two packs do um and it also doesn't have a type advantage in the final fight like the other two packs do uh 
Uh, we pick up a silver spoon right there. That's just so um, we have every other floor but this one covered with a silver spoon. I put my um, portal back there in a very specific spot so that I can avoid encounters. Um, right now we're just grabbing the story spots in order to uh, unlock the boss. Um, so we have our tanks covering as much damage off our mages as we can. That is their purpose. Our asters have a very specific purpose in the final fight. Um, and that is to cast the spell that weakens Velcavrana. Um, so we use asters because they can't die on the first turn. And that's one thing when, uh... I first started running this game was that I had my tanks do that job. Um, but they can be one shot crit uh, on the first turn uh, before they can even uh, defend. They're, it's just the speed difference between um, them and Velkavrana is so massive before you uh, debuff Velkavrana that they just have no ability to defend themselves or get off uh, their spell faster. So, um, like, you could just lose puppets here, and uh, then you wouldn't have enough mana to cast the, cast the debuff, and you die. Um, and it felt really bad doing, like, two hours of game just to get in here, like, get in the final fight, and then be crit. Like, immediately. Um, so if I have our Great Sages packed, um, there's a good chance. So we're not going to put the pact on immediately, because it would lower our reinforcements. It requires, like, 49 to be put on. Uh, a, we... I don't think we can afford it right now. Um, we usually have to do... Uh, a packed EXP farm in uh, Astrum in order to put it on. Um, but we also need to be like have the ability to uh, drop portals right now, as you're going to see me drop one like right over here. Yep. So I wouldn't be able to do that uh, even if I was able to put on the Sages Pact. So. Um, and it will end up covering over that pact where my asters are. Um, uh, one thing that you definitely have to remember to do after you've completed Dusk and Tannis is to scapegoat um, and remove your sin because uh, having a bunch of sin built up increases your enemy's chance of criticaling you um, and the amount of damage that receiving a critical will do. And you don't want that kind of um, uh, debuff. So also going into the final fight, I put on these phantom rings. So these have a bunch of debuff resistance on them. Uh, I'm, I'm basically just putting whatever, uh, whatever I can put on my tanks to make them a little bit sturdier. A little bit beefier. Um, yeah. So right there I tried to put on Great Sages and my um, packed allowance went to negative one. Which is unfortunate. Um, so we need to come in and farm these uh, statues. The, the purple enemies uh, give, I believe... 6 EXP towards packed EXP. So um, they're the highest value. Uh, normal enemies only give a single point of packed EXP. Whereas bosses give like obscene portions. Uh, also, if you ever overcap 
your mana in this game and run into a mana reaper. Um, those also count, uh, like you have boss levels of pack DXP. Um, so we're heading into the final boss fight. These guys are doing the debuffs since they can't be killed in one turn, except by very, very rare decapitation. My tanks are going to take their first turn to attack just because they aren't fast enough to defend on the first turn. So if they can't do their job, they might as well get some extra damage in, maybe fish for some crits, even though I'm sure their percent chance to crit is like sub 1% based on the stat differential. Um... But I got an extra thousand damage out of it. You never know when that's actually going to make a difference. Um, so after the first turn is uh, generally the only turn that I will ever heal. After that, it's basically a race to dead. Um, you can try a second one, but every time that I have ever been like in a position where I needed to do that, I basically got screwed for it. So it's not something I would advise. Um, basically, you're crit fishing with your asters, defending with your pure forts, and your mages are going full ham until like something gives way. Either like their fragile little HP bars or the boss's um, HP bar. But you'll see that, like, these... Uh, oh, actually, everything hits for very effective. I just know that uh, Blunt and Mud damage does less damage uh, before you debuff Velcavrana and everything. Uh, turns into very uh, effective. Um, so I'm pretty sure it keeps some of that multiplier going into um, its debuff state. Um, I think I got really lucky, unlucky on this fight, and end up tying when Velcavron is red bar. I believe it's right after this that I get had. I don't, I don't remember if it was guard raid or what. Um, also, if you ever need to use items, use your asters to uh, do resing or do um, reviving. Uh, just because they have the least important job. It's also uh, nice to have their packed, their um, to do the uh, reviving. Uh, once you get to Sin Wave, if you don't end the fight basically as soon as humanly possible, like if you don't finish it on uh, the turn that Sin Wave starts, you've basically lost. So I'm um, basically like. I think on this fight I got really unlucky on when I hit uh, the HP trigger to start Stand Wave. Uh, basically when Red Flashing starts, and then I think one of my very important attacks that would have finished the fight from my Witch Brigade uh, got blocked. So um, Basically at this point I'm just praying for um, my lucky pack to finish. Uh, sadly, I don't think they do it, but that's basically the strategy uh, towards the speedrun. Um, there's there's probably mountains of things that like I, <laughs> I could go back and clarify um, that like just uh, would either have to be like observed or asked or found out for oneself, but that's um. I believe about two hours of me running my mouth, uh, so I'm gonna yeah. defeat. Sadly, this run wasn't able to go the distance, but um, but yeah, that is uh, a not awful tutorial and a lot of uh, me yammering. Hopefully, uh, it contains enough interesting information uh, and enough helpful information.